Let me write some sequences for you and see if you can guess what the next number is. 1, 5, 9, 13. What's the next number? 17, right? So what do you notice? That the next number will go a n plus 1. It's whatever the previous one. And you adding to it what? 4. 50. 45. 40. 35. What's the next number? 30. In this case, the next number is what? It's the one before it, minus five. If the next number is always the result of addition or subtraction, it's called arithmetic sequence. So if the next number is generated by adding a number to the one before it or subtracting a number, it's called arithmetic sequence. Why do you have like all the second AN plus one, should that be minus one? This one, I'm using the next, that's the previous. See the next one more than this. If you say minus one, then it's two more than that. Oh, so like one term, or like, yeah. yeah I this is like one, and this is the one after it. This is the one after it is the previous one, or the current <laughs> one. How is that? The next one, A next, will do this, is equal A current, whatever you have right now, plus four. The other one, A next, that's what it means is the current one, oh. correct, is whatever, whatever I have right now, if I subtract 35 from it, I'll get the next one. Whatever I have now, the last one, if I add to it, in this case 4, I'll get the next one. That's what that means. So a lot of times you have numbers like these, 1, 5, 9, 13, 17, I go, okay, can you tell me what the 10th number is going to be? Sure. 1, 5, 9, 13, 17, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Add 4 more, which is what? 21, 25, 29, 33. Are we at 10th number? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. One more. 37. So this is the first 10 numbers. If I said, can you tell me what the 50th number is? I want to know what the 50th number is. <laughs> well, you're not going to go and write this 49 times. Go, oh, wait a minute. The next one's going to be four more. Because if you're going to do it that way, go the 500 then. So is there a way to get us to that answer without having to write them all? And the answer is yes. If you want to get any number... Any number, doesn't matter what that number is, is you take the first one and you're going to add to it. Our book calls it here n minus 1 times d. The difference between these numbers called d. So in the first example here, in this example, if I go back there, D is the difference between this and this. What's the difference here? Four. Four. Here, D equals to what in this one? Negative five. Negative five. Yeah. It's decreasing. So if it's increasing, it's positive. If it's decreasing, it's negative. So if I want to get the 500 number, that's N equals 500. So what is the 500? That means N is 500. You take the first number, which is what? One. One. Add to it. N, N is what? 500 minus 1 times D. And what's D? 4. So it's 1 plus 3, or 4, not 3. 499 times 4. 2,000. Can't be 2,000, but less than that. 1,997, I think, is it? Yeah. 96? Yeah. Plus, plus, plus the 1. Yeah. You got to do the subtractions first in parentheses. Yeah. So 
And that's five hundred is four ninety nine times the four. Yeah. Add the one. So that five hundred number is gonna be actually one ninety one nine nine seven. Let's see if it's true. Let's see what the tenth number is. Because we just did that one. We'll know if it's working. So what is the tenth number for the same example here? It's the first one plus n minus 1 times d. The first one is 1. 10 minus 1 times d, d which is what? 4. 9 times 4, 36 plus 1. Is that what we got here? So you can get to the answer without having to list all the numbers. Now, if I want to find the sum of the first 10 numbers, if I want to add them. So this is how to find the number. Now I want to find the sum of them. the sum of n numbers. I'm going to use Sn for sum. And we have an equation for that too. If you want to find the sum of them, it's always going to be n divided by 2 times a1 plus an. Somebody did. I know. So let's take the first 10 numbers again, going back to that example. 1, 5, 9, 13, 17. So we know D here is equal to 4. I want to find the sum of the first 50 numbers. Of the four, first 50? Of these, yeah, of this sequence. Yeah. That means I can't do it yet. That's what the question is. Why? Because to, to find the sum, I need to know what the 50th number first is. So I need to wait till I know what the 50th number is. Let's find the 50th number. A50 equals A1 plus N minus 1 times D. What's A1? One, this is what? 50 minus 1 times D, which is what? 4. four. 49 times 4. So that's 197. So now let's find the sum of the first 50 numbers. If you were to write them all and add them, the sum will be n over 2 times a1 plus a n, which is 50 over 2 times 1 plus 197. Fifty over two is what? Twenty-five. Mm -hmm. One plus one ninety-seven. So what is that number? Forty-nine hundred fifty. So if you write the first fifty numbers to that sequence, if you write them all out, and you add them, your sum is going to be four nine five zero. Who first discovered these things? That's what I just said. Uh, this actual math been around for about over 2,000 years. Well, not over 2,000, we've been on the earth that long. But. Because um, you learn these things in high school, but you never ask the teacher any question. Well, this is actually, this equation, I think, is James Dowd who discovered this one. I think it's James Dowd. For, and this one goes back. It's a Greek mathematician. I don't know if it's Greek. He was a mathematician there. 
Pascal, actually the next one you'll see Pascal discover that. And Pascal been dead for over 300, 400 years. So the stuff is not something new. So now, where do we use the stuff? Let's see. Where do we use it in real life? I'll give you an example. Christmas is coming. You walk into a Christmas farm to pull some trees. You notice the Christmas trees planted like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's say there's eight of them here. The next row has two more. They spread them, so they're not. The next row has two more. These are all Christmas trees. So this has eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This has eight. This has 10. This has 12. And you kept looking, and there's like acres and acres of Christmas trees. You start counting how many rows you have there. And you notice the last row is about, I don't know, there's, I don't know, 60 rows there. So how many Christmas trees do they have there? That's the sum of all these trees. So what is the sum of the 60 rows of these Christmas trees? Now this number, 8, 2, I mean 10, 12, I already gave you the answer. D is equal to what? Two. Two. So how many rows there? How many, what's the sum? I can't do it yet till I know what the 60th row has, how many trees in it. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the first one plus N minus 1 times D. First one is 8 plus 60 minus 1 times 2. This is 118, I think. Mm -hmm. It's 126 trees in the last row. Now, how many Christmas trees we have on the farm? It's 60 divided by 2 times A1 plus A60th. That's 30. 8 plus 126. 4,020 4, Christmas trees. Now, if you're the farmer, you say, I'm going to sell them for 50 bucks a tree. You're trying to estimate how much money you're going to have. At 50 bucks a tree, because some are worth more. That'll be what? 50 times 4020 the farmer expected that much money at the end so at row 60 there's 126 christmas trees correct in that row. yep okay. you can use it for a movie theater when you walk in the usually the stage is set up like this or a concert there's always two three more for the row behind the next one the next one the next one you want to go and rent some chairs from Taylor Renter because you want to have a shower at your house or a wedding at your house. And you put 10 in the first row, 15 in the second row, uh, 20 in the next row. You can keep doing that and you can figure out actually how many chairs you need to rent without having to count. Huh? Then you can't use that. The difference has to be the same. For this to be an arithmetic sequence, the next row has to be always, in this case, two more than the one before it. If it changes, what you have to do is look, for example, let's say the first four go by two, then by three. Then you've got to do the first like four as a separate sequence, add the sum for them. Do the other ones as a separate one, add the sum for them, and so forth. Yeah, you can't have two, three, five, seven, you know? Let's try somewhere the value is decreasing.
Let me see if I can get some uh, real life examples here. <coughs> this one talks about a beach area. So since it feels like summertime today, yeah, sure. Uh, it says we have a beach area now has the area right now is 9,500 meters squared. We can use yard squared, doesn't matter. The example used meters. But the beach area is being eroded there. The waves, the low tide is sucking the beach, the area out. So they're losing, it says on average, they're losing 100 square meters each year. So they lose 100 meters squared every year. If they lost 400 square or meters squared during the last year, what will be the area eight years from now? Here we go. It says if it lost 400 square meters during the, f the last year. So we don't need the 100 thing. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. We just need the 400. Yeah, that's, that's combined. I'm assuming that's combined. Combined, you know? Because it says. One hundred, one hundred more of its area each year. There's the question actually. Here. But then it tells us yeah, it that's four hundred. I don't know. A beach now has an area of ninety-five hundred meters squared, but it's eroding such that it loses one hundred meters square more of its area each year than during so the pre. Oh, each year, year during the pre. Okay, I got you. 100 more each year, more than the year before that. So the first year they lost what? Nothing. When we started, there was nothing, right? Zero. So after one year, they lost what? 100. After another year, they lost 100 more than that, which is what? 200. After another year, they lost what? 100 more, 300. This year, they lost what? 400. And the question is what? What will be the area eight years from now? So that only shows this is actually the loss here, yeah, they right? Try, they try to help you, but they pay oh, you off. Yeah. <laughs> so if you think about it, so what is left? This is what you lost, right? So what's the area left? Initially, you have what? You just subtract. 9,500. Mm -hmm. This year, how much left there? 9,400. This area, what do you have left? 100 more than this, right? 93. 92. 92. Uh, what is it? 91. That's what you're That's your answer. They lost 400 out of... That year. 100 more than the year before. 100 more than the year before, you know? So each one is 100 more than this. That means what's left is always 100 less each year, 100 less than the year before. So you had 9,400 and then you lost 200. Yeah, off of the 9,400, you subtract 200. Because after year one, you lost 100, so you subtract 100 from the 95, and then after... The 300 from this, then 400 from that, thing that. You think that's what they meant? Yeah, because you're losing more, you're losing 200 after the first year. You're not losing 100 every year. Yeah. You're losing 100 the first year, 200. It can't be in this section. They, they say that. Yeah. You, it can't be in this section then. Oh, you're right. Because D has to be the same. They're yeah. stating that, yeah, they state yeah. that yeah. there's yeah. 100 yeah. every year. Yeah. yeah. D has to be the same. Otherwise, it wouldn't be in this section. This problem's Yeah. So, every year they're losing 100 more than yes. the year before. Yes. So, because otherwise, if you start subtracting 400, 300, we can't use the equation we just learned because D has to be the same for every yeah, single problem. Why is it so simple? Why so, are we using the 
D will be, well, because it says eight years, yeah, because you can just continue with that. Oh, the, it asks yeah. for eight, okay. Yeah. So D in this case will be minus 100. I thought that was the answer. So if we start with this, yeah. if you want to know how much, is the question how much they lost or how much left? Left? What is the question? Uh, if they lost one, what will be the, its area? Eight years. So what's left? So let's use that one. And let's use this as eight years from this date, right? Mm -hmm. So if I look at the sequence from here as my new sequence, this is 9100 right now. Next month is going to be what? Or next year is going to be what? 9,000 9, or 1,000, right? Next one is what? 8,900. So if this is my A1, I need to find what A8 here, eight years from this date. Okay, okay. So what is eight? A8. No, no, from this date. It says eight years from this date, the question. It says, if we lost 400 square meters during the last year, what will be its yeah. area eight years from now, yeah. from this date? So I don't care what happened here. That becomes my new stuff. We've been losing, losing, losing. I'm interested says, from this point. It says now it's at 95. Now it's 95. It doesn't. It says now it's 95. No, it's going to be 95. Four. Four. No, no, four. No, it's zero. I'll pretend this one was 95. We'll go that way. Otherwise, we'll be the whole night arguing what they meant by the question. Okay. So we'll be, I'm looking at it. This was the 9,500. I don't care what he meant because I don't understand what he meant there. So that's how I'm going to look at it. If you think he meant now is 95 and what's eight years from that date, that's fine too. The only thing is going to change your A1. A1 is either going to be this number or it's going to be that number. It depends what they meant by. So I don't know. I don't look at them. So we have A1 plus N minus 1 times D. So if you will we'll do it both ways. If you want to do it from this point at 91, you go, well, that's 9,100. This will be 7 times what? Negative 100. N minus 1. 8 oh. minus 1. Gotcha. And that will be what? 91 minus 700, which 84. is 84. If you think they meant this is one eight year from this date, then how much you have will be A1 plus N minus 1 times D. A1 will be what? 9,500 plus N minus 1, which is what? 7 times a negative 100. Is that 88? Yep. So it depends what they meant by, is it from this point or that? I'm looking at they meant from now. You're saying they meant from here. We can call them and say, tell me what do you mean. There's another one which is more clear, actually. This one, there's no more guessing or trying to think what they meant. A logging camp. So at a logging camp, we have 15 layers of logs are piled on top of each other. You know, when you see them, the log, if you ever look at them, they look like this from the front, right? Yeah. The next one sits in between, not on top of it. They never sit. Then the next one is what? Then like this. That's how they stack them. So if you look at this, one, two, three, four, five, the next row has how many? One, two, four. The next one has three. It's always one less when you stack them. So let's see what we have here. At a logging cap, 15 layers. So we have 15 layers on top of each other. That's N, the rows. Stack 15 of them. Because we have no idea if the top one is one or something else. Piled. If we have 20 logs at the bottom, at the bottom, We have 20 logs there. Where's the problem? 
And we're looking for what, 15 layers. Can we figure out actually how many logs on the top? A on the top, which is the 15th layer. Now, what do we know? If there's 20 on the first layer, what's on the second one, the one above it? 19, the one above it. So what is D equal to? Negative one here. A15 is gonna be what? A1 plus N minus one times D. 20, 15 minus one times a negative one. 20 plus 14 times a negative one, that's negative 14, six on the top. The next question, how many logs are in the pile? How many? <coughs> That's the sum. The sum of the 15 layers is going to be what? 15. N over 1, okay. I mean N over 2, N over 1 is N, times A1 plus AN. N is what, 15? 15 over 2 times A1 is the bottom, which is what? 20. AN is the top, which is what? 6. That's 26. That's 13 times 15 if you want to. Which is what? 195 logs. There's an interesting problem actually here. It looks like a car here. When you buy a car, they depreciate, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you buy, let's say for example, I don't know, let's pick a nice car. <laughs> You guys are all young. I prefer Mercedes, but BMW, if you're young, that's the car for the young people, you know? Well, I'll take a truck, actually. You bought a BMW, one of those cute little cars, for 65000 Now... IRS said, you know what, the value is going to, or when you take the car, depreciate, lose value. The minute you drive it off the lot, it just lost. Let's say it loses $3,000 every year. Depreciate. $3,000 every year. So today, when you get the car, before you get in the seat and start driving it, 65. A year later, it's going to be worth what? 62,000. A year later, it's going to be worth what? 59,000. I'm sure it'll depreciate a lot faster than that. Not just 3,000, but just an example. Just depreciation. How long would it take for the car to be worth nothing? That's right. It says that's impossible. Somebody will buy it. <laughs> worth zero we'll say based on the depreciation <laughs> how many years so we're looking for n here Negative. what we tell you in this example that we tell you the nth value the value of that is actually zero you tell me what n you find n so i'm telling you what the value there but i'm looking for n so let's it can't be zero zero is worth 6500 it's going to keep dropping, dropping. Eventually, it's going to hit 3,000. Negative 3,000 is our I should have made this 66 because that's going to be some 
crazy number, like a percent, like a decimal, 13.5, whatever, something like this. So let's see, what's the equation for a n? It's a1 plus n minus 1 times what? D. A n is equal to 0. When it's worth nothing, it's 0. Instead of, should we make it 2,000? Because it's not going to be worth 0. Let's make it 2,000. It's not going to be worth 0. Even if it's... Uh, not running, you still can put chicken in it and use it as a coop there, worth something. <laughs> Donate that to 1-800-CARS, whatever. I changed the value, it's not zero, so it never will be worth zero. Somebody will buy the tires, somebody will take the horn, somebody will take something. <laughs> well, let's say $2,000. How long would it take to be worth $2,000? What's A1? 65,000 65, plus N minus 1. We don't know what N is. We're looking for it. Not 2,000. And what's D here? Negative 3,000. Now you're going to solve it for N. Move that number down there. 2,000 minus 65,000 is what? Negative 63,000 plus n minus 1 times what? Uh, I mean equals, equals n minus 1 times. I'm not going to distribute. I'll leave it. It'll be easier if I leave it. Why? Because that's a multiplication. What's the opposite to multiplication? Divide by negative 3,000. By the way, it wasn't by accident I made it worth $2,000. Because I want that number to be a perfect number there. So what's 63 divided by 3? 21? 21. No. Equals n minus 1. You bring the negative 1 here. n equals 22. So based on this, if it only loses 3000 per year, we'll take 22 years if you can find the car. 22 years later, it'll be worth only $2,000. Trust me, probably lose about six, seven thousand. Oh, yeah. A car that big there. Yeah. So if you wait twenty-two years, I can sell it to you for two thousand. <laughs> Give me your number, I'll hold it. <laughs> yeah. So that's how we can use actually that equation. Some of these examples here. Now notice that with the arithmetic sequence, the next number is always addition or subtraction. It's not multiplication or division. Mm 